Greetings in the light of our Infinite One. I am Manka. That which I would speak with you about is entitled The Halls of Grandeur. The Halls of Grandeur refers to that environment in which all awareness wends its way from its dim beginnings in that which you call antiquity until its eventual at oneness in the presence of that which we shall call the divine. In those eons of time in which this awareness we refer to traverses this path which wends its way through many existences both material and non-material, on its way to the awareness of itself. We find that it traverses in many forms, both carnate and incarnate, and in that which is physical and that which is etheric. Let us for a moment examine some of the degrees of awareness evolvement that many of those present on your planet have experienced. I speak now of those upon your planet's surface who long ago walked with beasts that were prehistoric in nature in a dim remote age and those among you who trampled the grasses and fields and plains and then across the rugged plains and mountains of the continents on your planet, and those which huddled in groups for fear of extinguishing that spark of enlightenment represented by the human evolution. These were the beginnings, degrees of consciousness as such for many. In looking about at the evolution of this in regards to that planet you call the earth. We see the rudimentary forms of divine enlightenment, the glimmerings and man's awareness of a deity that encompassed all and impinged on an immature mentality, the recognition that there was a force to be reckoned with beyond the laws of that which man knew in his environment. And so we witness the beginnings of the philosophies of behavior and conduct termed by your historians as foundations of religious and moral concepts through many eras of time, through many mighty as well as weak civilizations, from the races and societies of Atlantis, through those of the pharaohs, and later through all the degrees of religious evolution as well, this awareness of man upon your planet evolved steadily to its present state. I am encapsulating the sequences of time in order to shorten this little narrative. For though these hallways have been ones of grandeur in the remote moments of man's consciousness, evolution upon your planet, we believe, is more intriguing in that yet to be experienced in your futures. People of Earth, the halls of grandeur that I speak of now exist in terms of how you describe distance. It is merely a thought away. As this awareness grows, the step is taken, and soon one's total awareness finds itself experiencing all manner of new ideas, sensations, 
and environments. The steps that await you are truly the halls of grandeur, for they take you beyond the confines of that which you know at this time, and suddenly that which you call your real self finds itself experiencing a type of freedom unknown in your present time. Without restrictions, without, let us say, the knowledgeable observance of certain physical laws. Consciousness now enters a realm where it knows the boundless intimacies of true existence. And here we find that faculty of man free to travel into dimensions unknown in the physical. Time, as you describe it, no longer has meaning or value. Distance, as you describe it, no longer exists. The tri-dimensional concept of physical reality fades to insignificance, for here are no dimensions. Here in the realms where thought alone exists, where the mind soars, is freedom a freedom so intense, so vivid in its reality, that it is difficult for your present awareness to resist the urge to return. Here, on this level, we find a scope of awareness, an environment that is truly infinite, for as I have mentioned, all that is capable of being conceptualized in thought exists. In your minds, can you imagine the joys of this awareness? You know the freedom from that which you term fatigue. You sense an unbounded exhilaration in your existence. You grasp even with the most tender and minute quality of that which is true essence. You know joys, you experience love, and you accept truth. Burdened as you are in your present environment, perhaps to some there may be difficulties in comprehending this. But to those who already have sensed this ability, they have grasped its import. And to those who will soon stretch forth their awareness and accept it, this is what partially is the fulfillment. In this realm where perhaps we might speak on a more personal level with each degree of consciousness, where we might truly share our thoughts, we would then have no need for our present method of communication. Should we desire, we could transport ourselves mentally through the fabric of all space to a destination anywhere within the many halls of our infinite one's existence. Would this not be a goal worth seeking and attainment worth your efforts, not as a means of escape from that which you endure in your present life, but as a means of solving the mystery of the real you in the physical world. I speak not of some paradise where thought may flee to a different reality, but I speak of a realm where thought, might, and truth, fullness, and complete honesty know the problems and solutions that affect your earth. In these halls of grandeur, all that the mind can conceive of beauty, of love, and of primary import, intelligence and light exists. 
I do not give you these words or thoughts idly, people of earth. This level of awareness is reality, more distinctly real than that which you presently experience, even at this moment. Many of you have formed an idea, a concept regarding that which you call your tridimensional world of physical reality. And you say, as I have often noted, that it is the world of illusion. If this be so, then the level of awareness that I have just described is of greater reality. The thought comes from many minds upon your planet. As to how one accomplishes this transition from one level of awareness to another, with the ability to return at will. I could burden you unnecessarily with countless techniques that have had been handed down to you from the pages of your antiquity. I could give you explanations and rationalizations that some upon your planet would accept, and on the other hand, express to you why others will not be able to accomplish this. The reasons, the explanations are legion. I would, in their place, offer this for your consideration. To those upon your planet who really attempt to know, to those who can grasp even minutely the essence of thought, to these, the halls of grandeur are an open path. Lest you think that my words are as vague as other concepts offered you in the past, I would remind you that I have merely stated, if you could but glimpse the knowledge, these halls would be yours. You ask, what qualifications does that which we call man need to experience this? There has been only one qualification of prime importance since the beginnings of the evolution of your degree of consciousness and awareness, and that is to seek, to study, to know with certainty the knowledge that this awareness exists. These are the three. True, not everyone can accept that which I have stated. But to the vast majority to whom I speak, it is not only a probability, it is a distinct possibility, and only needs the three ingredients that I have mentioned. If you would accept this, you would find the answers to that which troubles your world. Our mission, people of Earth, is not the execution of our Infinite One's work. It is one of support to our Infinite One's mission. Therefore, if there be those among you who have considered that someday in your futures we would be the ones to stand upon your surface and end the chaotic madness possessing the minds of men upon your planet. May I humbly request that that thought be re-evaluated. If the planet Earth is to survive the birth pains of its emergence into that which your peoples have described as a new age of existence, then that survival, my brothers of Earth, will be because of your knowledge of our Infinite One's purpose and of your true self. In these halls of grandeur, we, your brothers in space, and those worlds about you, have eagerly waited since the dawn of many ages past, the reunion we have spoken of often. We still exercise 
that which you call patience. We do not grow weary. We only grow more concerned at your lack of concern for the blindness, the lack of awareness is not of any being's intent nor of any one's intent. It is your blind acceptance of limitation, your own intent. Perhaps you think I place undue concern upon this matter. Of all of the planets within this, our solar system, there is a special affinity and gratitude that I feel in connection with your planet. This is not of a sentimental nature. It goes far deeper than that. It is a realization that there dwells within the minds, the hearts, and the emotions of men and women individually upon your planet the knowledge and the certainty of the true path. This I may be sympathetic with. This I can entirely place myself in rapport with. And therefore, when those monitors upon our craft receive those emanations of thought from the minds of those upon your surface, who earnestly, rightfully, sincerely seek a greater awareness, then we are thrilled, for we recognize another light flickering in a vast sea of darkness. That illumination can only be brightened by your efforts, you to whom I speak. Think well upon that life which you are leading. Think well upon those missions you feel destined to accomplish, and know that those which are of greatest benefit to the attainment of your individual awareness and enlightenment are those which are the most harmonious with the intent of the infinite. None of you to whom I speak are so gross in your manifestation of divine intelligence that you do not have a glimmering within your being of that which is our divine one concept. Therefore, in complete integrity, I can only submit to the intelligent minds upon your planet's surface these thoughts. Again, no that which you are. Stand with the dignity of that which you represent. Grasp with a firm hold the sanctity of man within each of you and recognize it in those who join you in your effort. And it will not be long until we truly have that often repeated privilege we have expressed that of greeting you as true sons of light. May our infinite one's light be with all of you. May his radiance illuminate the darkness of your thoughts and your world. And may I again have the privilege of speaking with all of you, my brothers and sisters, of earth. In his radiance I depart now. Adonai, my brothers, I am Mangara. Adonai.